Welcome back everyone, my name's Abby. Today's practice is going to be a pretty chill practice. Some self-massage, some gentle stretches, some restorative and meditation towards the end. It will also be a pregnancy safe practice. So if you are pregnant, do not fear. We will not be laying on our bellies or going upside down a whole lot. So this hopefully will feel good in your body as well. For props, I'd like you to have a couple blocks if you have them. A blanket or even like a beach towel will work fine. And if you have a meditation cushion, you may want to have that on hand and or a pillow or bolster. Once you've gathered those props up, we will start with a little self-massage. And this one can be a little intense and I'll show you a couple different ways you can do it. So that it'll be a calf massage. And the first way I'll show you is in tabletop. So I'll come to hands and knees. My knees are padded because I like padding. And then I'll take one knee, in this case my right knee, to my left calves. My right foot is also on the ground. My toes are tucked under. And then I'm just going to gently and lovingly scrape my knee down the length of the calf and back up again. And then I'll do that a few times. And then at any point you can just switch to the other side. So that's, this is one way of doing this. If you have tender wrists or being in tabletop just feels like a little too much for you today. And if your knees will allow it, an alternative to that is to take your blanket or your towel, make kind of a dense, thin roll with it and then wedge that roll right up in the nook of the knees and sit back over the heels. And I might even use my blocks here at least to start because again, it can be pretty intense. So I might use my blocks to absorb a little bit of my weight so I can kind of gradually come down. And again, if you're on hands and knees massaging your calves with, with your opposite knee, just take your time and switch back and forth however you need to. I'm gonna stay here because this is feeling good to me. If you are also in this variation, you might, after a few breaths, roll the blanket roll down a little further. So the roll is both getting bigger and moving down the leg. It's a little easier for me anyway to sit closer to my heels as the blanket roll moves down. Still intense, but not quite as intense as it started. And then again, you can move the roll down when you'd like. So, so just working our way gradually down the calves and kind of feeling a bonus massage in the hamstrings as well. I'll take another eight or so breaths. Massaging with knee to opposite calves, switching as you need or rolling the blanket backward and then maybe forward again. And either position that you're in, either variation of calf massage Start to let your breath expand and slow down. Sometimes with intense physical sensation, there can be kind of a tightening or a squeezing at first, but see if you can invite that to kind of soften and relax. And then when you're done, you can slide the blanket out from under the knees if it's been there. And then we'll move the legs out in front of us. You may want to sit on a slightly folded blanket if having the legs out in front of you is, is a little bit of a struggle. 
we're going to move into a quad massage. And again, I'll show you two different ways you could do this. The first way is, again, if your knees and hips and spine allow, is to cross one ankle to the opposite thigh. And then, again, slowly, lovingly, and tenderly scrape your ankle and shin bones up and down the quad muscles. If this doesn't feel good for your knee or for your hip or for your lower back or any really any part of you, you can instead use your hands and just give a nice squeeze of the muscles that way. And again, switching from side to side however you need to. And just as we did in the last massage, checking in with your breathing and kind of the overall tone of your body. If you feel things tightening and clenching up, especially in response to the, the intensity, you can dial the intensity back a little bit, either squeezing lighter or kind of holding the leg a little higher so there's less pressure. And you can also encourage your breath to slow down, to get a little deeper, to get a little wider. Remind your body that, that it is safe and that you're always allowed to adjust if something doesn't feel quite right. And the important part, I think, is not to find more sensation or to create more sensation or even to, quote, loosen our muscles. The intention, as far as I'm concerned, is to just practice feeling, practice listening, and practice responding kindly to what we hear and to what we feel. If you've been on one leg for a while and you haven't yet switched, you can switch to the other side. And then when you feel evened out, right and left side, you can release what you've got, either the crisscross or the legs, the hands from the legs. Give everything a little shake, maybe take both hands, give a little squeeze down the IT bands. And then we're gonna come back to hands and knees and utilize both our blocks and also our blanket. So I'm gonna take my blanket, again, just to pad underneath my knees and my blocks underneath my hands to give myself a little more space. And then I'll take my left leg forward. And uh, this stage of pregnancy, I'm taking my feet a little bit wider to give my, give my belly some room. So make room for your body whatever state it's in. And then we'll alternate between just the simple lunge, letting the hips sink a little forward. I'm feeling more stretch and length in the right hip flexors and a little into the quads here. And then you can either straighten just your left leg, maybe walking the blocks back a little bit, or I usually like to straighten both legs and coming into pyramid. 
So choose whichever of those feels more easeful, more spacious. And then at your own pace, just shift between those two shapes. This is one of my absolute favorite things to do for legs and hips. Shifting from lunge to pyramid. And letting my breath kind of set that pace or harmonize with the pace. You can also notice your spine your shoulders, your arms. So sometimes as I come back to that forward fold, I will intentionally slightly round my spine as I push my hands into the blocks. As I come down to the lunge, I might find just a hint of a back bend, a little bit of a cow stretch. And then we'll meet in a pyramid pose. So both legs straight or straight-ish. And then we'll take a quarter turn to a wide-legged fold. So I'm gonna bring my blocks with me. You don't have to bring your blocks if you can pretty easily come to the ground, but sometimes blocks are nice anyway. And then taking a couple breaths, shifting the weight a little forward and a little back. I'm not in my deepest forward fold that I could be here. I'm intentionally kind of letting my heart lift. Again, if you're super pregnant or being upside down just doesn't really feel great right now, you can, you can also lift the torso somewhat. And then if it feels good, you can then start to move pretty far side to side. So walking the hands almost all the way over towards that right foot. Here's a point where I, I probably don't need blocks anymore. I'm bending my right knee pretty deeply in skandhasana. And then up and over towards the other side, bending into the left knee. Ah, lengthening my right leg. And then doing that a couple more times, your pace. And it really doesn't matter if the right heel lifts off the ground or not. For some of us, it's gonna lift automatically. For others, it won't necessarily. So either way is totally fine. Just making sure you feel stable, stable enough, balanced enough. And then next time I'm near my front foot. I'm just going to turn towards the top of the mat and then step forward and find a malasana squat. So both feet are going to go pretty wide. Knees are going to sink low or hips are going to sink low rather. Hands are going to come together as the knees press apart. And then from there, I'll come to a forward fold. And again, for me, I'm not coming to my deepest forward fold. I'm leaving room for my belly and staying a little lifted in the heart. And then we'll step the left foot back and do the same thing on the other side. So framing my right foot with the blocks. You could even go to the outside of the blocks if that feels more spacious for you. Um, but either way, just making sure your body has room and then alternating gently between a lunge and either half splits with front leg straight or pyramid with both legs straight. And I say straight, but straight-ish. You can always have a little bend in one or both knees. And as you move to and fro from one pose or shape to the next, taking your time to really feel, to listen, to respond kindly, making any adjustments that you wanna make, noticing the spine, the shoulders, the arms, even the hands, as well as 
all that good movement and sensation in the legs and the hips. And then again, we'll meet in a pyramid. From there, take a quarter turn, wide-legged fold. And I think I won't use my blocks this time. I'll fold a little bit deeper, but again, you can use your blocks if that feels good. And then from here, walking a little side to side, Hands meander towards one foot or one end of the mat as that knee bends. And then towards the other as the opposite knee bends. If it feels better for you just to stay more central in a forward fold or a slightly lifted forward fold, that's great too. You don't have to move into skandhasanas. And then next time you're near your right foot, you can turn towards the top of the mat. And then again, we'll shift forward into Malasana, wiggling the feet wider, sinking the hips down. This time around, I'm going to come up a little higher in Malasana. You can do either one, a high or low. And then we'll rise all the way up to standing, bringing the feet a little closer to each other, giving the arms and legs a little shake. And then if you'd like to hold on to the wall for this next bit, there'll be a little bit of balance. I'm going to shift my weight to my left foot, pick up the right foot, and draw both knees or both inner thighs towards each other as I pull the right heel towards my butt. And I have, I have pretty tight quads, so I, I might notice my right knee coming a little forward of my left leg, that's fine. Another thing you might notice is your spine arching quite a bit, if, especially if the quads are tight. If you notice that, you might consider pointing the tailbone down, lifting the belly and the heart slightly up if you want more sensation. And then release that side, we'll shift to the other side. Again, you can hold on to a wall if you want as you take left hand to left foot or ankle. Inner thighs are drawing towards each other, left knee is pointing as straight down as it can reasonably. Tailbone is also trying to point down. But again, don't worry if, you're, if your thigh bone is, is jutting a little in front of the right thigh. And then release that side. Both legs can have a little shake. 